Я, ты хоть живой, живой, живой. Вылазь. Что вылазь? Вылезай, Контакт. Вылазь, вылезай. Быстро. Ебал пол, ебал пол, ебал пол. Ползи, ползи сюда, сюда ползи. Сюда ко мне. Сюда ко мне. Сюда ко мне, быстро. 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 Хочу лево. Бело. За дерево. Быстрее, быстрее. Быстрее. Быстрее сюда. Гранат нету. Я буду рад, я тебе говорю, я тебе попалась и сюда. Пацаны, чекайте. Ползи, ползи сюда, быстрее. Russian forces continue to pay a record price in personnel and equipment losses amid Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, according to figures by Kyiv. Russia has suffered record losses of personnel, armored vehicles and artillery systems, Ukraine's defense ministry said. According to the report, the total loss of armored fighting vehicles equipment since the start of the war to 18,450. Newsweek says that Kyiv's figures for October claim that Russia had lost 903 of the vehicles, which is the highest monthly total since February 2022, beating the previous record of 889 recorded in March 2022 at the start of the war. Ukraine also said that Russian forces lost 27,840 cars and cisterns. Drilling down into these numbers for October showed that over the last month, there were record losses of this equipment of 2,340, beating the previous high of 2,103 in July. Ukraine's estimate of Russia's artillery systems has also surpassed the milestone of 20,000, reaching 20,013. Meanwhile, on the metric of troop losses, which includes those both killed and injured, Russia continues to pay a huge cost in personnel, according to Kyiv. It said that there were 693,640 Russian casualties, the total, during the war. The monthly tally for October reached 40,520, the highest of Putin's full-scale invasion, beating the previous record of 38,940 in May this year. Ukraine says its figures are approximate. Getting an accurate number for Russian losses is difficult, with neither side publicizing the toll in personnel or equipment in the war. Russia has not updated its official figure of troop losses since September 2022, when it said that just under 6,000 soldiers had died. Russian forces are making incremental gains in Donetsk, but they rely on infantry-heavy assaults that generate high numbers of casualties in what are dubbed meat grinder tactics. The chief of the defense staff for the British Army, Admiral Tony Radikin said in July it would take five years to replenish the Russian army to where it was before the start of the war, according to Newsweek. Horrific losses of the Russian army is making it harder for Putin to continue the war. However, Moscow is reportedly able to call on around 30,000 new recruits each month. Also, its force numbers will be boosted by North Korean troops, around 10,000 of whom will be sent to Russia to fight, according to the Pentagon. The Center of National Resistance reports that about 84,000 Kadyrovites are preparing for war against Ukraine. They were involved voluntarily. According to the CNR, Kadyrov plans to send Chechens to the front, claiming that Chechnya has fulfilled all tasks and that this number of terrorists was recruited voluntarily. The organization emphasizes that Moscow is not coping with the war situation and the regime lacks cannon fodder. The CNR indicates that the puppet regime will do everything possible to use the opportunity to send Chechens and other representatives of national minorities of the Russian Federation to the front, acting on the ideas of Putin and his entourage. 
It is noted that according to Kadyrov's statements, Chechnya has fulfilled all the tasks set by the Kremlin to avoid mobilization. That is, this number of terrorists was recruited voluntarily and people should be grateful to him for this, the National Resistance Center points out. Earlier in October, it became known that Kadyrov proposed sending traffic offenders in Chechnya to the war against Ukraine. He instructed Russian State Duma Deputy Adam Delimkanov to take this issue under control. Additionally, according to Kadyrov, a new regiment is being formed in Chechnya consisting of 2,500 personnel and the deployment of offenders to the front will be appropriate. Earlier, Kadyrov said that Chechnya, which is a federal republic of Russia, had sent more than 26,000 fighters to Ukraine from the start of the war, including 12,000 volunteers, and that at the time, 7,000 of them were actively fighting. There have also been several Chechen armed formations fighting on the side of Ukraine in the war that began with Russia's full-scale aggression in Ukraine. Kadyrov's militant commander of the special forces, Akhmat Apti Alodinov, reported that Russian military committed 187 crimes in the Kursk region. He learned about this from the head of the Ministry of Internal Affairs for the Kursk region, Viktor Kosarev. Among the crimes were murders and rapes. Alodinov did not specify the period during which these crimes occurred, and allegedly the militants of Akhmat did not commit any of them. It is worth noting that the head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, accused State Duma deputies Bekan Barakoev and Rizvan Kurbanov, as well as Senator Suleiman Kerimov, of plotting to kill him. Since Kadyrov's ascent to the presidency in 2007, the Chechen government has gradually fortified its friendship with the Kremlin by quashing its internal opposition movements. Still, the legacy of Russian intervention in Chechnya continues to inspire outrage, leading Chechens in the diaspora to join arms with Ukrainian soldiers in a kindred fight against Russian domination. Footage has been released showing the exchange of bodies of Russian and Ukrainian servicemen who died in Russia's Kursk region. As can be seen from the photos taken and shared by the Russian military, dozens of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian army have been returned. Some of them are wounded. At the same time, Ukrainian fighters who were in captivity have also been returned. It should be noted that the Ukrainian army launched large-scale incursion into Russia's Kursk region three months ago. It should be noted that this is the first prisoner exchange since the beginning of hostilities in Kursk. South Korea and the US on Friday conducted their first-ever joint live-fire exercise using unmanned aerial vehicles as part of efforts to demonstrate their readiness. South Korea's RQ-4B Global Hawk reconnaissance aircraft and the US MQ-9 Reaper strike drone were mobilized for the training, according to South Korea's Air Force. South Korea and the US have been expanding their regular military drills to cope with North Korea's evolving nuclear threats. The exercise took place a day after North Korea test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, which demonstrated a potential advancement in its ability to launch long-range nuclear attacks on the mainland U.S. South Korea's foreign ministry said on Friday it has imposed unilateral sanctions on 11 North Korean individuals and four organizations for their alleged roles in procuring missile components and generating foreign currency to fund Pyongyang's weapons program. The sanctions are largely symbolic given that financial transactions between the Koreas have been suspended for years.